Pillarization is the politico-denominational segregation of a society. These societies were vertically divided into several segments or pillars according to different religions or ideologies. The best known examples of this are the Dutch and Belgian ones. These pillars all had their own social institutions, their own newspapers, broadcasting organizations, political parties, trade unions and farmers associations, banks, schools, hospitals, universities, scouting organizations and sports clubs. Some companies even hired only personnel of a specific religion or ideology. This led to a situation where many people had no personal contact with people from another pillar, Austrian, Iraqi Arab, French, Israeli, Italian, Lebanese, Maltese, Nigerian, Northern Irish, Scottish, Serbo-Croat, Yugoslavian, Spanish and Taiwanese societies are all were other examples of this phenomenon. Netherlands. The Netherlands had three pillars. Protestant, Catholic and Social Democratic. Pillarization was originally initiated by Abraham Kuyper and his neo-Calvinist anti-revolutionary party. It was part of their philosophy of sphere, sovereignty. The Catholic pillar had the highest degree of organization, because Catholic clergy promoted the organization of almost the whole life of Catholics in confessional institutions. Yet, the conservative Protestant pillar and the socialist pillar, which mainly consisted of industrial workers, were nearly as tightly knit. The Protestant Christian Historical Union did not organize a pillar of its own but linked itself to the Protestant pillar shaped by the ARP, people who were not associated with one of these pillars mainly middle and upper class latitudinarian Protestants and atheists arguably set up their own pillar, the liberal or general pillar. Ties between general organizations were a lot weaker than within the other three pillars. Liberals actually rejected the voluntary segregation of the society and denied the existence of a liberal pillar. The political parties usually associated with this group were the Free-Minded Democratic League and Liberal State Party. Communists, humanist and ultra-Orthodox Protestants also set up similar organizations, however, such groups were a lot smaller. The development of pillarization in the Netherlands was favored by the emancipation of working and lower middle classes on the one hand, and the execution of elite control on the other hand. The emancipation of the working class led to the establishment of socialist parties, trade unions, media, cooperative shops and collectively organized leisure activities. This full curve of the socialist movement for its members existed similarly in other European countries. The emancipation of the conservative and often strongly religious lower middle class fostered the emergence of the Protestant pillar. While the Dutch bourgeoisie was rather liberal and adhered to enlightened Protestantism, a large part of the lower middle class embraced a more orthodox Calvinist theology taught by preacher and politician Abraham Kuyper. In 1866 Kuyper founded the Gereformed current of Protestantism that was both more conservative and more popular with ordinary people than the established Protestant churches in the Netherlands. Kuyper's worldview asserted the principle of sphere sovereignty, rejecting both ecclesiasticism and status secularism. Instead he argued that both had their own spheres in which the other was not to interfere. In 1879 he founded the Anti-Revolutionary Party as the political wing of his religious movement and core of the Protestant pillar. At the same time, new and old elites tried to maintain their control over the newly emancipated social groups. For instance, the Catholic clergy set up confessional unions to prevent Catholic workers from joining socialist unions. One reason behind the formation of Christian parties was to counter the feared rise of left-wing mass parties. Institutions by pillar The following table shows the most important institutions by pillar. Depillarization after World War II liberals and socialists, but also Protestants and Catholics, began to doubt the pillarized system. They founded a unity movement, the People's Movement Nederlandse Volksbewegung. 
Progressives of all pillars were united in the aim to renew the political system, but pillarization was ingrained in Dutch society, and could not be defeated that easily. In order to force this breakthrough, the Socialist Social Democratic Workers' Party, the left liberal VDB and the Christian Socialist CDU united to form the PVDA, a progressive party, which was open to all people. The new party did not, however, gain enough support under Catholics or Reformed and the PVDA became encapsulated in the Socialist pillar. Television broadcasting was also pillarized but everyone watched the same broadcast nonetheless, since initially only one channel was available in the Netherlands. During the 1960s the pillars largely broke down, particularly under political criticism from D66 and the group NIEUW links in PVDA. Because of this and of increased mobility, many people could see that people from the other pillars were not that different from themselves. Increased wealth and education made people independent of many of the pillarized institutions, and the young people did not want to be associated with these organizations anymore. In 1973, two main Protestant parties, ARP and CHU, merged with the Catholic KVP to form the Christian Democratic Appeal. They first participated in the 1977 general elections. In 1976, the Catholic Trade Union Nederlands Katholiek Vakverbond started to cooperate with the Trade Union of the Socialist Pillar, to merge into the Federation Nederlands of Wieging in 1982. The pillarization of society has disappeared, but many remnants can still be seen in the 21st century. Public television, for instance, is still divided in several organizations, instead of being one organization. The Netherlands has both public and religious schools, a divide which is also inherited from pillarization. Moreover, some communities continue to behave as small pillars as of 2014. Update, although rather than forming the structure of society, this currently moves them outside the mainstream of society. Members of the Reformed churches have their own schools, their own national newspaper, and some other organizations, such as a labor union. Members of several Pietist Reformed churches have also founded their own schools, newspaper and political party. Increasingly, Muslim immigrants in the Netherlands are also using the legal possibilities created for the pillarized structure of society by setting up their own schools. Belgium. Apart from having no Protestant pillar, pillarization in Belgium was very similar to that in Netherlands. There was also no general pillar but a politically well-organized liberal pillar. In both Flanders and Wallonia, societies are pillarized. In Flanders, Catholics were the dominant pillar, while the socialists dominated in Wallonia. Even though the liberals are stronger in Belgium than in the Netherlands, they are still relatively weak, owing to their rather small, bourgeois support. Liberal trade unions are very small. The TIJD, a financial daily, is the newspaper aligned with the liberals, as its readership consists mainly of liberal supporters. However, a Flemish newspaper with historical liberal roots, Het Leish Nieuws, also exists. Denominational schools receive some public money, although not parity of funding as in the Netherlands, so that tuition is almost completely free. Belgian universities charge more or less the same, relatively low, tuition fees. As a consequence of the language struggle in the latter half of the 20th century, the pillars split over the language issue, which turnout became the most significant divisive factor in the nation. Now every language group has three pillars of its own. The pillar system remained to be the primordial societal dividing force much longer than it was in the Netherlands. Only near the end of the Cold War did it begin to lose importance, at least at the individual level, and to this day it continues to influence Belgian society. For example, even the 1999-2003 Rainbow Coalition of Guy Verhofstadt was often rendered with the terms of pillarization. Political currents, which rose in late 20th century, did not attempt to build pillars. 
Pillarization was visible even in everyday social organizations such as musical ensembles, sport clubs, recreational facilities, etc. Weakened in the current situation, many major social organizations still strictly follow the lines of peers though. Institutions by pillar with their ethnic divisions The following table is limited to the most important institutions and it shows the current division of everyone by the three ethnic groups. Austria. The Austrian version of Erzsilling is the long-standing proposed doctrine. This was first only within the politics of the Second Austrian Republic but later degenerated into a neo-corporatist system of patronage and nepotism pervading many aspects of Austrian life. The proposed was created, developed and promoted by the two mainstream parties the Catholic Austrian People's Party and the Social Democratic Socialist Party of Austria. This de facto two-party system collapsed with the elections of 1999, which resulted in the joining of the National Conservative Freedom Party of Austria, whose political marginalization and that of its predecessor. The proposed system arose out of the need for balanced, consensual governance in the early years of Austria's Second Republic. At that time, the country was consumed in an effort to rebuild the country after the devastation of World War II. Thus, the doctrine of propose is intimately linked to the idea of the Grand Coalition, in which the major political parties, in the case of post-war Austria the SPO and the OVP, share in the government. At first it was decided that the occupation of federal political positions by either members of the two big parties should be according to the proportionally of the number of seats of each party in the national rate. But soon this policy was repeated as a land-level policy, then it was decided that civil service, military, trade unions and even economy and state businesses positions had to be occupied by members of the two big parties proportionally by the results of their seats in the national rate or in the Landtag. Afterward, this policy reached into membership in every type of association, sport clubs, culture groups, motoring organizations, folk music brotherhoods, converting them in bifurcated ones, divided into two parts, if not two different organizations. Even the public broadcasting off was divided between ideological fences, this system was popular in the post-war period, however, starting from the 1980s people's perceptions and opinions changed strongly. The old proposed system, where basically the SPO and the OVP would divide everything up between them, was increasingly seen as outdated and even undemocratic because both parties always had an absolute majority in parliament, no effective opposition could ever exist. Almost all Second Austrian Republic governments have been OVPSPO coalitions, which resulted in a situation that some political positions were almost property of each party and occupied by a member of each one, according to the basis of its constituency or any perceived ideological mandate to them. For example, the Minister for Labour and Social Relations was nearly always held by a member of the, while the OVP, with traditionally strong support from farmers, took the ministry which controlled agriculture and forestry. As voters' frustration with the old system grew, the FPO under the young and dynamic party chairman Jörg Haider was able to ride the wave of discontent and win votes in every parliamentary election. The FPO had its core support with the right wing, but was increasingly able to attract voters from the conservative OVP and even made inroads with traditional SPO voters who grew fed up with the grand coalitions in the old proposed system. A diversified media and the possibilities of modern information technology also hold the government to higher standards of transparency and accountability. Above all, there has been a sea change in the public's attitude to the practice and its willingness to confront it, getting the opportunity to cancel. Today, there is almost no trace of propose left in Austria. Austrian Institutions by Pillar Malta Institutions by Pillar 
Northern Ireland. Institutions by Pillar. Northern Ireland has been described as a divided community ever since its partition from the rest of Ireland. The pillarization here was therefore between nationalists who want Northern Ireland to be united with the rest of Ireland and unionists who want to remain a part of the UK. In the late 1960s nationalists believed unionists had a better pillar and therefore civil right protests began eventually leading to 30 years of conflict known as the The Troubles. The unionist monopoly over jobs in the shipyard was a significant factor to these protests. Today almost a century on from Ireland's partition, urban communities are still very much segregated. Within these communities there is a zealous passion to maintain either a Catholic or Protestant identity and therefore this causes communities so avoid any forms of culture that is not associated with their own. For example, most state schools do not teach Irish as it is considered a foreign language. While most Catholic, nationalist schools do not play cricket as it is considered a remnant of British colonialism, literature, Dieskauer, Chris, freezing pillars and frozen cleavages, party systems and voting alignments in consociational democracies, party systems and voter alignments revisited, pp. 205-221. Post, Harry, Pillarization, An Analysis of Dutch and Belgian Society, Avery, Van Schendelen, P.C., M., Consociationalism, Pillarization and Conflict Management in the Low Countries, Boom, Christophe de Vogt, Histoire des Pays Bas des Origines et Nos Jeux, Fayard, Paris, 2004.